Welcome to Top Video Game Podcast of the Week from HorribleNight.com. It is Thursday, July 11th, 2013. I'm your host, Justin Lacey. Joining me tonight to talk about the week in gaming is Justin Gifford. Hi, hey guys. I'm back. <laughs> How the hell have you been, man? Uh, good. This week's kind of been nuts, but otherwise, you know... It's it's not 150 degrees and it's nice right tonight. Now. It is like yeah, windows open. Been a weird Indiana summer, like no humidity. So, um, but but we won't talk about just the weather tonight. We will get to our games of the week and our worst and best of, the, of in the gaming industry. Um, we are taking your responses in chat. This is an interactive show. Uh, we air this live at 9:30. Eastern on Twitch TV slash Horrible Night, and um, you can submit your answers on Facebook as well. But we are taking, if chat you want to throw, try to distract us with your answers during the show. Uh, we definitely invite that. But um, before we get to the, <laughs> before we get to the games, Gifford, what have you been up to? Uh, quite a bit. Uh, for example, today I'm driving my car and I press down on the clutch and I hear a piece of plastic snap. Uh, I got back to uh, work and found a spring about yay long, uh, just laying on the floor. So that's not good. No, it's the clutch assist return spring, um, and of course I drive a Saab, which they don't make anymore. So that's going to be interesting to fix. Um, other than that, you know, Twitter's been driving me crazy because I wouldn't let me reset, and Captcha sucks. <laughs> you trying to reset your password? I, I was. Um, I, I got it, finally. And then the only other thing really kind of off-topic is there's this thing in uh, the practice of law called mediation, which is <laughs> you're, you're forced to do sometimes um, instead of going to litigate. And I got to do that this week. And it, it, although it's supposed to be sort of this non-confrontational thing, we won up hard, just dropped a bomb on it, and it was awesome. So, <laughs> so you're not you, you you there's no not normally a clear winner or loser. No, normally you go into mediation hoping that both parties are equally unhappy at the okay. end. <laughs> but you dropped some bombs. Yeah, yeah, we we kicked some ass. It was great. Did you get any ch- any chivos for that? Uh, like, my boss sent an email to me and the outside counsel I hired that said, "Great job, guys." Cool. <laughs> so, well, congratulations. You know, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I've got a lot of stuff going on um, personally that I'll talk a little bit more out more about in the coming weeks, but um, just kind of some stupid stuff I noticed this week because it's been a sad week, so I've been looking for really silly things to entertain me. And I was walking downtown last night in Indy, and uh, apparently Justin Bieber was in town. I don't know if you've heard of this guy. Um, the reason I hate Justin Bieber is because back His name's- when... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, you have the same you have the same problem. I used to get excited years and years ago when Twitter was first getting going and I would see uh the hashtag Justin like trending on Twitter and I thought, "Oh, that's kind of, you know, my name's my name's trending." And almost always assumed it was had to do with something Justin Timberlake was doing and you know, he's he's funny, he's entertaining. Uh, but then you go investigate, you just find this little punk kid that yeah. So anyway, he was in town. And I was walking downtown near um, Conseco Fieldhouse, or what's it called? Baker's Life Fieldhouse now, um, where he was I'm, playing. I'm hoping this story ends up with you kicking him in the nuts. <laughs> Not quite. Um, but I had a weird moment where there are certain times walking around downtown Indy where uh, the city doesn't... You, you notice something else is going on. One major instance is uh, when there's Colts games, you see all the Colts fans. Or the second big one is... Gen Con weekend when you see all the cosplayers and uh, the town, the city just feels completely different. But man, walking around town when there's a bunch of Bieber fans, it was like a very bizarre type of cosplay that made me really uncomfortable. And I wanted to run away as fast as I could, but um, unfortunately the restaurant I was going to was like right down the street from the concert. So, um, Quick aside on the same topic. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was working at... Uh, uh, Howl at the Moon, and yeah. which is, for those of you who don't know Indianapolis, is literally like right across the street from the Banker's Life Field House. Um, and I look and see like this family. It's like two teenage girls and then a mom and a dad. 
and there's all these people walking by. I'm like, what the hell is going on tonight? And one of my coworkers goes, oh, it's an R. Kelly concert. And I just sort of looked at him, and I was like, and that was a mom and dad taking their teenage daughters to his show? Well, you got to pay for college somehow, I guess. Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, I was... Yeah, I guess, would you rather your teenage daughter go to R. Kelly by herself? There were a lot of... There, there were also a lot of Bieber parents that were at the restaurant that definitely just dropped their kids off at the concert. And, uh, I don't know, it was very weird. It was just... It was very weird. Um, get out of my city. <laughs> that is basically all I'm trying to say. So... Um, but this is not a Justin Bieber podcast. This is a video game podcast, and we want to know what your game of the week is uh, in chat. Uh, but Gifford, kick us off. What have you been playing? Um, aside from crap that I've been playing for a while that nobody really wants to hear about, um, I picked up Deadlight just sort of out of the blue. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know if it was advertised or if I saw just a, a brief clip or something. Um but it was kind of a lot of fun. It was like a slower paced shadow complex. Um, mm -hmm. You know, some platforming and some killing some zombies and uh, kind of an interesting storyline the way it's presented. Um, n nothing, you know, super out of the ordinary. Um, but, yeah, I enjoyed it. it. It was a fun six or eight hours, something like that. Also, you, did you get you got through it? Yeah, I got through okay. it. I got. I'm 24 to 30 achievements. So. Oh, nice. You're doing your completionist thing. Um, the, I think this was part of last year's summer arcade, summer of arcade, or at least one of the Microsoft promotions. Actually, it's a Microsoft Studios game, so that shouldn't be a surprise. Um, but when it came out, I bought a bunch of games around it, and it kind of got knocked down a bit in the reviews because they said, like the like the first couple hours, the first few stages are just fantastic like it just sets up for a great game great atmosphere great gameplay and then it starts getting a little bit cheap uh towards the middle towards the end um did it's, you hit any level any frustration i i would i would take issue with that statement like that it gets cheap towards the middle and the end mm -hmm. there is one part of one stage oh okay that the, where the controls just aren't quite tight enough for what they want you to do. Like, there's a lot of traps, and you have to yeah. very carefully time it. And he sort of, your character sort of reacts like a real person. Like, it takes him a couple of steps to get up to sprint speed. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't immediately, you know, dive into a roll uh, when you tap, because it takes him a second to, like, tilt forward. Um, so... There were some traps that you had to get around, sort of Contra-esque traps, where it was very split-second reaction kind of mm -hmm. thing. And the, the controls or the way that he moved made it... I, I died a lot on just this one section of this one level. And after that, you know, it was fine. You just had to be patient. But, like, had I, had I not mentioned that, would that have even really stood out to you as a difficult yeah. portion? Okay, cool. I mean, it would have stood out as difficult and my but not like annoying or like stop playing the game type of wall. It it was annoying enough that like I stopped playing for a while. Like I was like, I'm gonna go do something else, <laughs> but not like you know throw my controller through the wall. Cool, kind cool of thing. No, I mean, just, I, Ethan was talking about this game um, a couple months ago now. I think he picked it up and he seemed to really like it. And you're the second guy in a row that um, has has come out like applauding that game. So I might have to give it a give it a chance just because I don't know. I felt like um, I like I said at that time I was buying a lot of games and didn't have room for it. But it seems what, you yeah that's never that's never happened to you before. <laughs> but so you can imagine for that moment in time for me to stand out how many games I was actually buying. Um, but uh, I'll have to I'll have to go back and give that a shot if it. Because I I I've been curious about it. I liked the uh, the the look it had going on there. So um, and oh, it's set in the mid '80s too. So that's kind of a cool vibe. Oh, cool. I mean, yeah. Um, games of the week from chat this week. Uh, Cole um, has been playing a lot of Vita and picked up Persona Four. So we won't be talking to him very much about anything other than RPGs if he gets sucked into that game. I've never played any of the... I played a little bit of Persona 3 
um, but have only heard glowing reviews of Persona 4. But uh, I also kind of think that Persona fans are a little bit of a cult. Like, they are just obsessed with those games. And, uh, um, I don't know, picking up picking up a, a JRPG these days has, has been a little bit difficult for me. What's the... Uh, I mean, outside, have you have you played a JRPG of recent memory? Me? Yeah. Um, I, the closest thing I've played to a JRPG recently is Cthulhu Saves the World. Okay. I mean, yeah. the structure yeah. of the game is very Move. JRPG. <laughs> um, but, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine today, and she's like, you realize we are opposite in gaming. Like... <laughs> Like, we're gaming opposites. So I was like, well, you can pretty much sum that up by the fact that you are solely JRPG and I'm WRPG. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, I can handle them sometimes if the material's clever enough, like it is in Cthulhu Saves the World. <laughs> but generally, no. Gotcha. Um, Aaron and I actually have been playing a lot of Cube World. Um, this also doubles for JPT's Game of the Week. Now, Cube World... Gifford, I don't know if you know about this. It's kind of the the next, I don't know, they're dubbing it the next Minecraft for PC. It's just it just launched its alpha uh, this past okay. weekend and has been so popular that their servers have been down and being they've been being hacked. So getting the game has been a little bit difficult. But it's, they essentially took a Minecraft world in that it's kind of got that blocky look and it's just the terrain is randomly and infinitely generated. So you just... But on top of that, it's just basically a third-person RPG, just adventure game. You just go out exploring and killing monsters and collecting things to craft weapons and getting loot. And uh, lots of fun um, playing with a group of people. Um, One thing, though, uh, this alpha right now currently doesn't have any music whatsoever. So we recommend bringing along somebody like JPT uh, to your voice chat that has a harmonica that can potentially make your own music <laughs> so uh that was kind of that was kind of beneficial but keep your keep your eye on cube world i i don't think it's gonna is um, it a hack and slash I mean, yeah it's diablo yeah um okay. yeah well it's 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 combat is very action oriented it's not mmo style combat so but you've got your abilities and but it's you can dodge and you know it's all it's all about hit you know hitting the enemy rather than timing everything so um but uh, I think it's still it needs a little bit more meat on its bones before it gets a you know a, a broad recommendation. But I think um, you know fans that like playing early indie games and like exploration games in particular um, would have fun with this right now. So you can get it for twenty bucks off their website, um, and it'd be kind of fun to watch this game grow. Is the twenty bucks like guarantee entry into the? Yeah, you get everything. Final. After, yeah, you get everything after yeah. that point. Don't pay again. So. Um, then Josh is also, um, uh, our other Vita player and he's picked up the Dracula X Chronicles. Uh, this is a, this was a PSP game. Basically they redid Dracula X, which was like the, I think it's essentially the prequel, uh, to Symphony of the Night. And, uh, but it's got kind of political, it's 2D, but polit- polygonal graphics. Um, and then you can unlock Symphony of the Night in there and he's also been playing Rondo of Blood so lots of Castlevania for Josh um Aaron is now leading leaving my town in Animal Crossing so goodbye Aaron uh just a side <laughs> note there and a shout out to Animal Crossing um uh, <laughs> my game of the week is an indie game that showed up at the end of the week last week on Steam N- had never heard of it had never seen anything about it Apparently it had been on Xbox Live Indie Games for a while and was also available on Desura and the developer's website. It was made by a one, um, a single developer. The game is called Bleed. I just posted a Game Curious video and review of it. It is a very unassuming looking 2D platforming shooter. Kind of pixel, pixel retro graphics, that whole thing. But it plays like it's a dual stick shooter. And uh, on top of that, it's very fast-paced. Your character um, has the ability to do um, slow everything down uh, into kind of a bullet time effect so you can dodge things and do more precise shooting and also just a ridiculous kind of 
dash slash triple jump move so you can get around the the level really really quickly um and it stars this uh pink haired girl named ren that wants to become the greatest video game hero of all time and so she's come up with a list of eight of the other great video game heroes that she has to take down the i I was listening politely until you said that and now i'm super intrigued yeah it was i I missed the whole I, i i hate it when they'll do a plot setup in the cut scene that will play in the introduction of the, like before the start screen comes up, but before you hit start. So, you know, like yeah, it'll go in, it'll play, but if you hit start at any point, you skip it. So all the like story setup was in that. So I didn't get this till after the fact, but it's a brilliant setup now that I've kind of witnessed it. And all you really need to know is the first mini boss that you fight is, uh, is a helicopter and you have to like jump over this helicopter, dodge its missiles and, and bullet time and shoot your own missiles back at it. And, um, uh, it, it has, I mean, it's, it's pretty difficult, but, and the controls take some getting used to, but once it all clicks, like it's, it's fun as hell to play. So it's, uh, it's only five bucks as well. If not, you can probably get it cheaper on the steam seller that's going on right now too, but highly recommend this game. I thought I was, I mean, I've played so many 2d platformers lately. I just keep assuming the next one I'm going to play is just going to, you know, fall on its face, but, they keep, I wouldn't say they're all getting better, but they're all, they all do something unique. And this thing, Bleed really piled on the unique features and it could have easily been a mess, but it ends up being pretty damn fun to play. Cool. And I can't remember the last video game I played as a, a pink haired lady. So got that going for you. Oh, um, don't lie. I haven't played any JRPGs for a while. That's all I'm trying, trying to say. Um, <laughs> as far as Moving on to HorribleNight.com highlights. Uh, Mr. Copywriter, uh, what stood out to you recently? Uh, Ethan just posted something, I believe, today about a Kickstarter game called Ship of Sacrifice. Yeah. Uh, which the they just go ahead and say on their Kickstarter, hey, we really enjoyed Paper Mario uh, and Earthbound 3. Is yeah, that right? Sure. Uh, in terms of the way that the graphics were, but you're on a ship and there's disease and it's designed to be played co-op uh, the entire way through. Um, so, I, you know, it's only a three-minute video, so you don't really get a great handle on it. And since it's a Kickstarter, they probably don't have a whole lot else to show, but at least it was intriguing enough that I put it on my watch list on Kickstarter. Oh, cool. Um, you know, I think their eventual goal was something like forty grand. Mm-hmm. So, how were they doing? I, I didn't get to look through. They had a couple of grand, and or maybe four grand, and they have twenty days left. So, gotcha. you know, uh, I'd give it a look. I, I've enjoyed Kickstarter so far. So, yeah, um, the art style was definitely cool. That was what stood out to me about from from that from that trailer, and then. Um, I don't know, kind of a the co-op adventure game style of it um, seemed a little bit unique, but I don't know. Co- uh, Kickstarter has been interesting lately with you know Double Fine. Basically, you know they set the stage for everything um, with their adventure game um, fundraising and the fact that they've run out of money. I'm just really curious to see where Kickstarter goes from here. Like if if they can't pull off that game. Um, Wait, Double good. Fine ran out of money on that? I, sorry. I, so, yeah, they had to... They are... Instead of asking or going back to Kickstarter... Okay, so first of all, they raised like four four times the amount they needed. I, right. Um, and I followed it to there, and then I stopped Actually, more attention. than that. Maybe like 10... For some reason, 400000 I think 400000 was their original goal, and they raised like $3 million or something like that. Yeah. But then he... So that he they basically wrote up this letter about how we then we started scoping a $3 million game, and we've since, you know, looked at... we forecasted how long it's going to take to finish this game, and we don't, we don't have enough money to see us through till the end. So they're going to do... They're going to release half of the game as an early release in January, and then um, from that, fund the second half, basically. So... That's... I, if I had donated that Kickstarter, I would be... Pissed. it's been it's been an interesting interesting ride so i'm not ready to like throw it out yet but um because i mean if you follow game development all going over budget is nothing new and you look at double fines history that's nothing new with them either 
Um, so you kind of know that going in, but at the same time, I mean, they're, they are accepting responsibility for that, and they're not asking for more money from current backers, but um, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out and how, again, how all of this affects other games on Kickstarter, because I think this will, you know, it'll define, um, it'll impact a lot of people that have donated to Kickstarter, so... Yeah, the the one thing that really jumps out at me about that though is, and I know you guys do budgets too, mm-hmm. but man, if we went over budget on something <laughs> like that, like we have to, you have to scope something out, and yeah, you know, people use special software to figure out how long it's, you know, how long it's going to take us and how much money it's going to cost in order to, you know, d- characterize a site and bring it to completion to to close it and pay fines and all that crap. If we bid. Four hundred thousand, and then spent three million. Mm-hmm. Are you kidding me? We'd we'd be out of business in no time. Well, I mean, I could go into this, but the only thing I'll say there is that when people when after they got the three million dollars, people weren't expecting the four hundred thousand dollar game. Like the four hundred thousand dollar game is, you know, it's more comparable to um, just a, just a completely it, it's not the grim fandango or this the the monkey island level of adventure game it's something much smaller and they kind of i think they should have rescoped it but they obviously went too far so it was somewhere in the middle they needed to aim and um anyway all i'm trying to say is this how that that outcome will determine a lot about how people view kickstarter going forward and um, when you see new ones popping up now after after that has happened, I'm just I'm I'm kind of really watching them with a curious eye to see if they still get the same amount of fervor from from fans or um, or maybe maybe this won't matter. Maybe people who are just drawn to Kickstarter in general and still want to help these people out. So anyway, um, myhorriblenight.com highlights. Um, I'm gonna do two articles this week just because. I was excited to see the return of a couple of our uh, editorial series. We're trying to push this a little bit more in the coming months. Um, It's kind of what we were founded on, and we've been focusing a lot on video lately, so good to see the writing come back. Um, uh, First of all, Ethan wrote a Just Five More Minutes article. Um, These are kind of retro reviews, but really looking back at old games that we were addicted to, but had to. we were forced to put the controller down, those type of situations. Ethan told kind of a hilarious story about his first interaction with the arcade game Area 51, one of the <laughs> one of the light gun shooters, and we all know alien, uh, Ethan hates aliens, but picture 10 to 12 year old Ethan going into an arcade and picking up not well picking up two of the guns at once and trying to 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 dual wield his way through Area 51 and then realizing when one character dies, he has to put one of the guns down to put a quarter in to revive the other character. And of course, by the time that happens, the other character dies and he gets caught in this endless, endless loop, uh, because 10 to 12 year old Ethan didn't put enough quarters in to start. But, uh, I just, that mental image alone was worth reading that article. So, and it's even funnier if you know what Ethan looked like when he was like 10 or 11. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, he was same ener- same energy, but sort of a short, pudgy guy. Yeah. <laughs> and then Gifford, you made your return to the editorial scene this week <clears throat> with an I, Ke- I confess article, um, our another retro series, a little bit um, <laughs> that um, details the, uh, the the classic games that some of us skipped over, and I think you were more or less pointing out the. The fact that you've played some Zelda games, but never like fell super in love with the genre, and we're debating going back to playing the two classics that would be uh, Link to the Past and Ocarina of Time, and you kind of laid out laid out. Is that is that an accurate summary? Uh, well, going back and playing most of them. I mean, okay. I I can see pl- going back to play Link to the Past and even um, Adventure of Link, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah. Ocarina, I I played the shit out of it. I'm not going back to that. Okay. I just think it's a, I I just I think it's overrated. And so are the Beatles. Uh, <laughs> Anything else you'd like to get off your chest? That Jesus guy is just all right with me. <laughs> um, that was that was a quote from music. Anyway, yeah. 
<laughs> well, I enjoyed the piece just because I don't know. You've you've always you've never had it out for Nintendo, but like uh, just your perspective counteracting a lot of a uh, colonize in particular that we grew up as Nintendo fanboys and still treat these some of these franchises gold and. Um, just hearing the other perspective is always interesting to me, and um, it did happen to bring out uh, a, a, an entertaining comment, which which these franchises tend to do. But um, officially, we can say ninety nine articles into the site uh, for Justin Gifford, three years of service. Um, this will be his final podcast. He has been fired from the from the site <laughs> uh, because finally. Someone discovered that uh, he is not a gamer because I think solely because you don't like the Lost Woods. Yeah, that that was it. It was anybody who doesn't love the Lost Woods is uh, not a gamer, and I just like to shoot things and watch them blow up. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, as you pointed out by reading one article, whoever this dude was, uh, pretty much encapsulated all of me. It was mm-hmm. the essence of Gifford's video gaming <laughs> distilled down. Oh man, we don't we don't intentionally write these things as troll bait but that was just kind of interesting to see someone someone actually react that way you kind of i, I feel like t- i draw in a disproportionate amount of trolls <laughs> well you make strong statements you're not afraid to do that and uh i feel like our readers and 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 the rest of our <laughs> staff know kind of know where your head's at where you're coming from but uh always interesting to see someone engage with that for the first time so <laughs> I got a lot of entertainment out of that, and and I needed that because we're going to move on to our uh, worst of the week in gaming, and uh, let's just start across the board. Cole, Aaron, Josh, you know, mm-hmm. I, I'd even throw myself in here, um, and I don't think you disagree that um, easily the story that the big the biggest story in gaming of the week was the passing of Ryan Davis, mm-hmm. and um, it it was it it was a tragedy. It was it was I'd never expected. Uh, myself to be impacted quite quite the way that it did um and we're actually going to do a tribute um podcast to to ryan and and talk about our experiences um with kind of watching giant bomb grow over the last few years so look for look for that on monday i won't dig too far into this but it is it is worth uh, at least pointing out that that this story above all um kind of stole all all of, all of our attention this week and like I'm still I'm still kind of recovering from it. You just kind of have those those ups and downs um you know we're we're a few more days out but still I still can't believe it. So uh well, did we we met him at Yes. Uh, PAX you and I years. you and I had a shot. You me and Coop had shots with Ryan Davis. It was the worst it was the worst shot ever. Yes. It was my fault. Right. Um I, I panicked. He was right. a good sport about it. He was. He's. I mean, he. He sure. What? A, he's like. He. Yeah. He's like. Absolutely. You know. Uh, he'll. He'll drink. Whatever we handed. I mean, we're complete strangers, and, and he doesn't. I don't even know what I'm handing him to drink at this point because I panicked. I went to the bar. <laughs> we knew this was happening, and I. I ordered two shots, two different types of shots. She didn't know how to make either of them. It didn't have the ingredients for either of them, and I just. I panicked and i think i told her to make an o-bomb but i don't think it came out right and it just it was it was very embarrassing but that dude is a trooper and um i'm grateful that we got we got to got to meet him but it, but kind of as cole's article said i also kind of realized i've been spending about four or five hours with the guy every week for about 10 years at this point the way i consume their content so um it's a it's a big loss for the industry and they paved the way a lot for how like the the best side of game journalism and kind of a lot of what Horrible Night was modeled after was what Ryan and Jeff at Giant Bomb have done. So um we're JP, starting on the wiki next week. All right. Um beyond that, um some of the other stories of the week, uh JPT uh pointed out that the CEO at Razer, um the big peripheral and now uh gaming peripheral and actually they're making uh, gaming PCs now. Um, that hardware maker um, is not releasing hardware for the PS3 because their CEO does not play the PS3. So, uh, quick question: <laughs> Are, yeah. Is is Razer actually a, the big peripheral peripheral maker, or is it just that they make really expensive shit and act like it's awesome? 
Because and that's not really a loaded question. I don't ha- have an opinion on this, but I, I, I've actually found I think Razer actually has some some entry level uh, hardware that I didn't know they that ha- I think they have like almost tiered hardware, and I I think the only stuff I've ever played with has been the cheap stuff. So I. I don't know, maybe I'm still holding out hope or just assuming that there's a top-of-the-line Razer thing that I'm just not willing to spend that much money on, But and some people must be. But, yeah, I've never actually had a a great piece of Razer hardware in my hand. So, But it's kind of funny how he just kind of threw out the PS3 like that. So, <laughs> I don't play it, so why would we make stuff for it? So, God, yeah, I mean, you're I'm one thinking. of the bigger name, I mean, the biggest name in... Gaming hard hardware or gaming peripherals, maybe you and Mad Cats, and you're supposed to be the quality one. But bang, hey, get, Mad Mad, Mad Cats is the one who nailed the uh, MLG contract. Yeah. What was your uh, worst of the worst of the week, Gifford? Oh, there's so much, but um, <laughs> you know, I, I guess you were telling me that this has been a recurring topic uh, is a hatred on the internet. Irrational internet hatred. Yeah, irrational internet hatred. Um, There's just been kind of a lot of it dumped on Microsoft recently, which, I mean, and I'm not trying to, like, come out and be like, they've done everything perfectly, because they've obviously fallen on their face about a lot of things, and they seem to have had a deaf ear about some other things. But it's not like they came out and made horrible racist comments or you know, said that girls shouldn't play video games. Like, they just maybe overpriced the Xbox and the, they <coughs> did a 180 <coughs> on their... Uh, uh, I'm drawing a complete blank on the on word. Their policies. Um, they're always on, yeah, the policies. Uh, so, I just saw something today courtesy of uh, Brandon over at uh, Co-op. Co-op. And... <laughs> It was pretty funny. He was just like, you know, Microsoft PR was, they might as well have written the piece. Um, oh, God. Uh, it was it was bad. I just saw the, uh, sorry, I just saw the headline, and I only read the first half of it when you posted it, was Xbox One, Xbox One isn't just for gamers. And I've seen a lot of those types of articles. Uh, but yeah, what's the second half? You know, there, was, there, was, there was one on our site <laughs> written yeah. by me. Um, the second half is just them talking about how awesome the Xbox One is going to be, essentially. For? Um, it was... Wait, did I miss something? No. Wait. No. Oh, sorry, you're prompting me. And I'm yes. Not, I'm not keeping up. Um, oh, they're talking about this, these integrated systems, and as an aside, you know, I just heard something about Microsoft rebranding themselves. Balmer staying in place, but they're trying to make this entire integrated system. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they announced small- their restructuring today. Well, that was the big thing today. Yeah. Um, so, but it would be ideal for a small business because it's cheaper for like streaming and uh, with and SkyDrive and Internet Explorer and blah, blah, blah. So, of course, I immediately uh, pre-ordered one using my company credit card. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, that'll that, that's going to go over just fine. Um, but, but you know, that said, I, I kind of looked at it and I was like, really? You know, some of the, <clears throat> the reactions in the Twitterverse particularly, uh, I, I just sort of looked at it and I was like, so now they're the internet evil? Like, the, they've had it easy for too long. We're just yeah. going to join Comcast and Wells Fargo and Walmart uh, because it's just a, sh- it's just a shame to see system. the Xbox division – of Microsoft finally become a part of Microsoft. I I don't even think it's a shame. I don't think they're doing anything particularly wrong, other than somebody in marketing had a deaf ear in terms of. No, I get, uh, yeah, that's 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 kind of what I mean. It's just like the oh, you were you were you were being sarcastic. Sorry. The, the 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 like the social deafness that they have, or like the um, just the lack of understanding of how they're perceived and how they continue to almost just set themselves up for more ridicule. Um, when, when, yeah, when you boil it all down, you under, you can understand the business case behind it, but they just do a, such a poor job of presenting that information that, uh, yeah, it's just, it's, it's just weekly comedy at this point, but, 
Um, well, there was that. There, I saw one article written by supposedly an in-house developer who was really upset mm-hmm. about them, you know, going back on the stuff, and he was like, "Oh, you're gonna do all kinds of awesome things yeah. and blah blah blah." And I was like, "Well, you did a shitty job of communicating it." Uh, That's what I mean. Like, I was all for where they were headed, but they had to sell it to a a, a large audience, and they failed at it. They fell on their face, and uh, yeah, we're gonna. It's gonna be a couple more years before. Anybody else can make that push, and it won't be Microsoft that makes that push. But Xbox One will be set up to win when some of that future stuff uh, comes to fruition via other means. I just don't. I just can't see Microsoft being the one to step out there um, to make that happen again. But and it's 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 too bad. It's too bad. Um, well, I, I think they might be able to squeeze in some of it just by like you know, because unless you do some digging, you never know what the hell your system update is. Right. Exactly. I think they they, I think will, they, they might will just they will integrate it slowly. Yeah, they will bring back some of them piece by piece. There, are, but some of the broader stuff they won't be able to do. But I mean, the thing is, a lot of these policies are centered around disc-based games, and that will go away. That will not be the majority of the audience in two to three years. And um, and Sony has still yet to really state what their po- digital policy is going to be. And um, I that, think that, uh, now the, that was some good PR. Oh, it was amazing. It was, it was a stu- the genius of Sony's work was not, not the things they said. It was some of the stuff they didn't say. Like, uh, but anyway, I can go into another E3 rant, but we've done plenty of those. <laughs> um, my worst of the week uh, was the trailer for the new Rambo video game, which if you have ever played or seen Far Cry 3, just avert your eyes from it because it, this game exists in a world that thinks Far Cry 3 doesn't exist, and therefore they think that their jungle game looks awesome when it looks jank as hell. <laughs> I mean, it looks like, you know, 70-year-old Sylvester Stallone out there um, still thinking he's a badass and just kind of trudging along and breaking a hip and, you know, just... I don't know. It was it was ugly, and I don't even know who was develop. Like I didn't recognize the developers, the publishers, and just why this game is exists now and it's supposed to come out by the end of the year uh, for current gen platforms. I bet it's going to be like a you know one of those thirty dollar games that we've seen a couple of those recently. But um, that's a that's a hell of a small market because that's like dudes our age and maybe a little older and a tiny bit younger that really remember Rambo in its glory mm-hmm. and play video games. Well, and, I, I mean, I'm, and there was a Rambo movie. Like that was less than five years ago. The, the, the newer movie that was no, supposedly that, okay, that, but like, that didn't, ha- that didn't happen. We're not talking <laughs> about that. I know. I know a couple people that like that movie. So, but it's just, I don't know the impetus behind releasing this game now or like especially after Far Cry. It's just like you look you don't know how bad you look and like there is if you want to play that game, you play you play Far Cry three. Um because it's like twenty bucks this week on the Steam sale. <laughs> I sh- I should do that. <laughs> oh man. Okay, moving on to good news. Good news. Best of the week in gaming, go Gifford. Uh, th- there's a link which will be shared. You should go to it. Um, it's a web comic that I really enjoy called Between Failures. Um, but anyway, the 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 comic I don't know today this week. The guys are talking and wants to borrow a phone so he can call this dude's sister, and he says I need her to use her particular talents to achieve a secret goal. And the response is like Renegade Secret or Paragon Secret. And the rest of the comic doesn't matter because that I started losing my shit. Right there. <laughs> that was hysterical. So that that's it. That You're was my all, favorite. That was my favorite thing about gaming this week. So were you jealous that you haven't had conversations with your your best friends that boiled it down to Renegade or Paragon decisions? I might. We could that. probably make you and I could probably make that happen pretty easily. Yeah, now that's top of mind. It's one of the reasons I'm looking for, for for Google Glass, is that you know I can have the Paragon and Renegade symbol just pop up when I have to make a decision. Uh, if, uh, as a lawyer, if the Renegade symbol popped up and I punched somebody, can I be prosecuted? Uh, yeah. Damn it! 
I thought that was. Right. Would, I thought the renegade symbol would hold up in a court of law, or at least intergalactic law. Well, maybe an intergalactic law, but uh, <laughs> a friend of mine today, she's uh, she's getting married and asked, she's looking for a groom's gift, and he is a humongous Mass Effect fan, mm-hmm. possibly, possibly even bigger than I am, and uh, was looking at cufflinks that have, you know, which ones to get. And I was like, no, you need to get these because he's got this patch and, you know, these ones look kind of crappy and I don't know if he played, you know, as Renegade or blah, blah, blah. And she was like, well, that's why you're my guy. And I was like, yes, my Mass Effect obsession has paid off. So <laughs> Your Mass Effect that, is, your obsession is doing good for others. <laughs> yeah, that, there's that. That's Finally. That's the way to put it. Um, so, yeah. I'm going to go with my silly little story this week. Only because I got a pretty big laugh out of it. Must have been sometime on Wednesday when I was starting to actually recover from everything else. <clears throat> but um, there's been a Wii U game that I've been keeping an eye on. Um, it's a mini game collection that actually you you, you just use the gamepad. You don't even use the TV. Um, but just the fact that Nintendo has stepped in. This is a third party developer. Uh, Nintendo has stepped in to help them with QA of this game. One, I, I mainly suspect, suspect this is because this is one of the few third-party games that is being released for the console, and because um, it's making heavy use of the gamepad and they could sell it up. So Nintendo has stepped in to delay the release of Spin the Bottle, <laughs> and it was more of just just that phrase that uh, Nintendo was getting 100% behind this game, and it, I mean. I believe it's a, I, I, yeah, it's it's it looks like a really bizarre, Nobi Nobi Boy slash Katamari, Domacy design, to a mini game collection with very weird characters and very weird situations. I don't I have trouble explaining it. Uh, go check out a trailer for it. it does, it'll it'll make you laugh. But uh, Nintendo's gonna make sure that this game is. Uh, gonna be as good as it as as it can be, and I think they've even stepped into the point where they've annoyed the developer. So um, there's only one way you can make that game good. Hot <laughs> girls have to come to your house and play it with you. No, no, no. You play with uh, uh, brightly colored, um, phallically designed creatures. That's what all of the artwork looks like. So. I... Moving on to Cole's best of the week in gaming. <laughs> um, actually, three of these guys, um, and I'll tie it into Cole's article as well. JPT, Josh, Cole, Aaron. Um, their best of the week was the fact that the bomb cat, the giant bomb guys, did a memorial podcast to Ryan Davis, and is a very very therapeutic pod- podcast. So if you have any connection to this whatsoever. Highly recommend you uh, um, getting some closure by listening to this podcast, and and also a shout out to Cole who who wrote uh, wrote down his thoughts on the whole Ryan Davis uh, passing uh, on our site this week. So said a lot of things. I tried to I tried to write stuff, but I just couldn't even put put the words together. And he did an amazing job with it. So um, and the other big news this week uh, from Aaron uh, is the Steam Summer Sale. It's on right now. Started last night um and just be careful out there that's all i can say <laughs> have you gotten that you've got your pc finally hooked up but i don't do you have the the steam summer yeah, sale itch I, um well i do now <laughs> um if this weren't going out if it's if this were not you know going out live over youtube and mm-hmm. our site and everything i'd be like don't tell my wife because uh, <laughs> now I'm gonna go upstairs and see what I can download. But uh, everything, yeah, I, I sort of forget about the Steam Summer Sale. But they've, yeah, um, I guess it was two years ago. I downloaded a bunch of crap from 2K. So yeah, uh, maybe everything from 2K ever. Yeah, those those publisher packets packs are kind of crazy. They've tied this into their their new trading card system, um, and they're trying to get you to get a. a your summer sale badge and all that stuff. But beyond, beyond that, what, what struck me this year or this sale, and I think what they probably, I think they maybe have four sales a year or three sales a year at this point. 
Um, but I kind of realized after the last three where I have just kind of gone ridiculous with my purchases and there aren't very many games for me left, left for me, um, that this really isn't for the the Steam player that is on there all the time. I kind of... when This when is this, for me. Yeah, when the site went down, it just kind of like... This is just their their call to all Steam users or new ones to come in and, and check them out. And it's kind of, uh, kind of an amazing event that seems to get bigger in, with each sale, even though I should technically be buying less and less games. But uh, very interesting phenomenon to watch. They need to uh, put Sleeping Dogs on sale. It's pro- probably is, or it will be. I guarantee. Like if it if it hasn't been released in the last two months, it's going to go on sale at some point. And hell, nice. chances are that even the most recently released games will have a five dollars off or something at least one day uh, over the course of the sale. So we'll get out of here with our question of the week. Uh, this is actually you helped me come up. You came up with this one. So. Um, is it weird when you hear about digital integration in schools and the sense of video games as teaching tools? Um, I'm trying to think of the, fir- the first instance that stood out to me, and I, I can't remember if you or Cole wrote the, wrote the article a couple, couple years ago over at, oh shit, where does the Brandy Gamer teach? It's not Indiana State. It's, um, is it Wabash? Where he was teaching. There was a there's a teacher in Indiana. He has oh, he does he does the blog the the Brainy Gamer, and he was teaching a course. Might have been Wabash. I think it I think it was Wabash teaching a course uh, on Portal, using Portal as a yeah teaching yeah, tool. yeah yeah yeah. Um, and that kind of blew my mind because, I you know I think back especially college it would be more acceptable um, to see video games kind of integrated, but when I was in college they they still weren't quite there yet. Um, and if they were, they were more in like your your animation courses and that kind of thing. Um, but to like actually te- teaching game theory at all or gamification of of anything in schools, I would love to see how that's implemented. But it's still kind of a, a foreign idea, I think, for for our generation. Yeah, the, the reason that this popped into my head is recently I've been hearing about, um, and I'm drawing a blank on it. I want to say it's a game space, but that may not be right. But it's funded by the MacArthur Foundation, mm-hmm. who normally funds stuff like international development. <laughs> but they're funding, you know, it's this huge, uh, this huge foundation. I didn't look at their um, federal filings, but I think they have assets in the billions. And it's just like, yeah, we're funding Game Space to help integrate education in uh, public schools. And you know, I'm listening to this on. Uh, uh, all things considered on uh, NPR on the drive home. And I'm like, wait, what <laughs> <laughs> did I just hear this? Um, so e- even though, you know, my wife works for a nonprofit and they're doing something that has to do with video games, I think it might have to do with literacy. It's still very odd for me to hear that. I mean, even though we had some educational games growing up on the Apple two E uh, they were, they were pretty limited and your exposure to them. It was super limited. Mm. but at the same time when you hear they're trying to really integrate this stuff because it's great at teaching this or it might be great at teaching this uh, that sort of blows my mind a little bit it's pretty cool I'm also curious to see who integrates um, <clears throat> like the, uh, the the upcoming Oculus Rift into courses and, and maybe not even just as an educational tool but like an experience type tool like um, the potential for that VR headset outside of just a traditional video game and uh, what other educational tools I can do with that and kind of using just seeing game technology push 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 education forward I think is an awesome thing <coughs> wow that's sort of br- <coughs> brilliant I just had like an image of somebody putting on the what are the HD sports cameras they put on helmets yeah yeah I know um, taking one of those you know somebody's wearing them in uh Thailand or uh, Kenya or whatever, and kids are be able to like use the Oculus Rift to look around a street in a, a foreign country. That would be pretty incredible. Yeah, that's gonna do it for tonight's show. Gifford, thanks for jumping on tonight. 
Absolutely. Chat, thanks for participating and, as always, helping out with our questions of the week. Um, Top Video Game pad- Podcast will be back again next week, and we'll have more podcasts for you from HorribleNight.com as well. Um, thanks for coming out. We'll see you next time.